Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about Supermicro X8DTT, X8DTT-F, and the uh, chassis that's inside, the CSE827. Let's get started. Well, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Supermicro X8DTT family of motherboards, which encompasses actually several different motherboards. Uh, if you find anything useful in today's video, do us a favor, click that like and smash that subscribe. Well, hey, we're going to get rolling. First things first, there are two CPUs inside each one of these blades. Uh, that CPU is an Intel Xeon 5500 or 5600 series CPU, which is an LGA1366 socket. We personally recommend a couple of very uh, cheap and inexpensive hex core processors, such as the X5650, the X5660, the X5670, or even the E5645. All these are great options for this machine, and you can get two hex cores for... I mean, really, you know, 70 to 100 buck range, maybe even cheaper, um, and and have this thing, you know, at 12 cores uh, for really a relatively uh, low low price point. So uh, that's the first thing I'd recommend about the CPUs. Regarding the RAM, it accepts DDR3 memory. There are 12 DIMM slots inside. You can use a number of different speeds as low as 1066. 1333 or up to 1600. I will note, however, if you use 1600, it's going to clock down to 1333. So if it costs you more, there's no added benefits. If it costs the same, I actually would recommend getting it because maybe you can use it in the future. Uh, but or if you just even have some laying around, uh, the 1600s will work. But again, just note they will clock down to 1333. Regarding the sizes, you can go as low as a 1 gig, a 2 gig, a 4 gig, an 8 gig, or all the way up to a 16 gig. No, unfortunately, 32 gig modules do not not work with this machine. We tried it. Unfortunately, they, they just you know didn't boot and they didn't register. Okay, as far as the type of RAM you can use, there's really one type of RAM and that's ECC registered. Unfortunately, uh, load reduced uh, known as LRDIMs don't work. Your only option is ECC registered known as an RDIM. With ECC registered, the max that you can get is 192 gigabytes using 12 16 gigs at 1333. Okay, well now that we know a little bit more about the machine, let's go ahead and open it up. Um, I will note there are uh, two screws on the top, um, and really depending on what, it, what it is that you want to access, uh, you can you know you can go into the top, or uh, I'll flip this around and show you here in a second. You can pull the blades out, which is how I personally like to access it if I'm going to be dealing with the RAM or CPUs, and you can just set it on top and work on it that way. Okay, but before we actually open it up and get into the machine. I'm going to grab my ESD gear. You really never want to be inside a machine without some kind of protection because you could always just have that little shock that could damage it. Uh, so I'm going to grab that and I'll be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we're safe to open the machine. I will note, I'm going to show you the first way. I'm not a fan of this way because you can only access the top two. It, you know, it's a way. Um, if you want, you can uh, take a screwdriver and basically just uh, simply take the screws out and access the top. It's, you know, very simple. Um, again, my only problem with this is you cannot access the bottom two blades. Um, so, you know, sometimes the advantage here is if, like, hey, if you can't get into uh, the back because of the rack, the way it's situated or something, um, and the blades are in the back, then, hey, you know, maybe that is a, um, a solution. But, uh, again, uh, I personally recommend uh, just pulling them out of the back. But if you take the screws out of the top, uh, you do have access to the CPUs and the RAM. Um, and if you do need to, uh, if you have an issue with, like, say, the back plane or these fans and you need to swap them out, you would need to open the top. Uh, you wouldn't be able to just, you know, pull out the blade. But in general, um, if you want to um, uh, get inside this machine or get inside one of the blades, pulling out of the back. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what it's designed for, right? So I wanted to show you that first method. Now we'll show you uh, what I actually recommend. All right, so I switched the angle to make it a little bit easier to see here. So this is how I do recommend to actually work on these machines. Um, you'll notice uh, these two hooks right here. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes get a little bent up, so you uh, you got to be careful with them. But under that, there are these two little tabs. These tabs, you need to push them in and then you can pull this out and it just slides out nice and easy, okay? So once you pull this out, there's no cables inside. You'll notice here at the very end, it's just this connector, okay? And once you pull it out, you can just set it on top of your machine or on a table, uh, wherever you're, you feel comfortable and then you're able to actually work on it. So we're gonna switch the angle right now and show you how to install the RAM. 
All right, so now that we've uh, pulled the board out, it's easier to work on it like this. Um, you can just set it down. We just put it like this to make it uh, easy for the camera. Um, you'll note um, for this specific setup, uh, unfortunately, the uh, you know the way that this card is here, it actually is uh, blocking access to using the second CPU. Um, so for this specific client that we're that we're building this out for, we are actually only putting in um, uh, six, uh, uh, yeah, six sixteen gigs. Uh, so you're not technically maxing it out. Uh, you're getting it to uh, 96 gigabytes as opposed to 192. Uh, but for the application that they're using this for, uh, 96 gigabytes is more than enough. Um, so I just wanted to note that before we got started, that if you were looking to max it out, uh, you know everything that we're doing is just make sure you have another CPU and a heat sink, um, and then you would just install the DIMMs over here as well. But so this is CPU one, and CPU one controls the six DIMM slots over here. This is CPU 2, which controls the six DIMM slots over here. Uh, this is important to note uh, in a situation like this, for instance, where you're only using one CPU, you need to make sure all the modules are over here. Let's say if I were to put um, you know, three over here and three over here, uh, these three wouldn't even register because they're only with CPU 2, okay? So uh, just some simple things that I wanted to, to point out just to make sure that, uh, you know, everyone is um, uh, using the machines properly. So. Um, I would also like to note that uh, CPU 1 has six DIMM slots. Uh, of the six DIMM slots, there are three memory channels, and each memory channel has two DIMM slots per channel, okay? So when I get started, one of the first things that I like to do, and this is a tip that I always tell everybody, and it's, it's a real simple, easy thing, just make sure all your tabs are open. You don't want to be trying to install RAM uh, and the tabs are actually blocking you from inserting it and you're fumbling around and you have potential to drop it. Not that you likely will, but uh, it could happen. So it's just one of those things I always just say, make sure all your tabs are open, okay? Um, the next thing that I want to point out, um, there is a key um, right here, this notch that you see in the middle of the leads. This key is very important on the module because uh, the key is not perfectly centered. So when you go to insert this module into the tab, or I'm sorry, into the slot, you need to make sure it's lined up properly because if it's not lined up properly, you could potentially damage the lead and, and break the module, or you could damage the dim slot and means that you might have to replace the whole motherboard uh, because these are all soldered in. So uh, it, neither are situations that you know you want to run into so you just need to make sure you line it up properly so in this case we want to line it up like this okay um, and if you were only putting in let's just say uh, three dims with this one CPU you'd want to make sure you put them at the start of the channel um, and the start of the channel is the black dim slot okay um, so we would install them like this if we were only putting three dims in Okay, now of course uh, I recommend uh, maxing it out, and uh, which is what we're about to do for it, having one CPU, um, and we're going to put all six in. But this would be the proper way to load it if you were only uh, using three DIMMs. And people go, well, why do you do it like that? Well, the reason why is you want to have a nice even distribution um, across. Uh, all the memory channels. You just want to balance your, your, your load. It just maximizes your performance. Uh, and the reason being, think of it like this, if you overload one channel and, and another channel is doing no work, you got one channel doing all the work and another channel doing nothing, well, you're not getting the most out of it, right? So you need to just balance it out completely, okay? And another thing you'll note, I'm not touching any of these modules. Uh, they look like they're inserted, but they're really not. And this is a common user error that we see all the time where someone thinks they have a bad module and actually the module is just not fully seated. So here's what you need to make sure you do. You need to hear these two clicks. Click one, click two. That's how you know the module is fully seated. And you notice how all these tabs are sticking out and this tab is fully in now? That's another way that you can tell. So one of the things that I tell people at the very end is to make sure your tabs are in. Because like this, if this tab is sticking out like that one was, you could tell that it didn't fully get inserted. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put the other three in because we wanna max uh, this bad boy out. So again, just making sure you're hearing the clicks, make sure you line it up properly. It's all very, very simple stuff. Um, I don't care if this is your first day on the job or you've been a computer technician 20 years, this is all uh, fairly easy to do, okay? So all right, now that we are done, you can see we've you know uh, just given this a nice boost. It's up to 96 gigabytes. Uh, like I said, you could get 192 if you had the second CPU installed. Uh, and really, it, it took a matter of minutes, really. You just pull it out, you pop them in, and you're done. So uh, it's, it's a very simple upgrade. 
um, and it's one that I always highly recommend because if you're looking to get more performance out of your blade as a whole, that's the easiest thing to do. Uh, upgrade the RAM. It'll, it'll give you a nice little boost in performance. So thanks for stopping by. If you made it this far, do us a favor, click that like, smash that subscribe, and if you need any upgrades for your X8DTT uh, family of motherboards, then just give us a ring or email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. We would love to help you out, uh, and we've got a ton of different options specifically for this motherboard. Have a great day.